Thanks to Blinkist for sponsoring today's video. In our solar system, we like to keep things simple. Just the one star found in the center with everything else orbiting around it, as is the case for most planetary systems found in the universe. However, there are some planetary systems out there where things get a bit more complicated, specifically multi-star systems, where there are two or more stars that orbit each other. In such configurations, what happens to any planets orbiting them? In fact, can planets orbit them at all with the gravitational tugs from different directions? To answer the latter question, the simple answer is yes, planets can orbit in such situations. Although, to answer the former question, there is no one answer fits all rule about how a planetary system in a multi-star system might look. What we can do, however, is explore some of the possibilities out there. But before we look at planets, it would be good to understand how multi-star systems work. For the most part, stable star systems have organized themselves into hierarchical systems. This is due to the proximity in which they formed with each other, which we will touch on a little later. Binary star systems are generally simple enough. Binary stars orbit around a barycenter, or in other words, their center of mass. If the masses of these two stars are similar, then nearly symmetrical elliptical orbits are often seen. Although there can be occasions where they orbit in circles, in a similar fashion to Pluto and Charon. In the case that one object is more massive than the other, then the more massive object's orbit doesn't take it as far out compared to the less massive object. Beyond binary systems, you can have three, four, five, six, seven, or more stars in the same system. And as you will see, there is a structure within these systems to keep them stable. In the case of three stars, you'll have two stars orbiting each other in a binary configuration, with the third orbiting around a barycenter with the other two. This keeps the system stable, because if three stars had their orbits cross, one would certainly get ejected from the system at some point. In a three star system, two of the stars are contained in their own enclosed little system, acting as one star in the grand scheme of the whole system itself. We group this binary configuration into a tier, with that tier acting together in its association with the single star. In a way, once you have grouped the binary configuration in the system, this upper tier now acts like a two star system again, with the two stars and the one star orbiting each other. In the case of four stars, you'll either have two binary configurations orbiting around a barycenter, or one binary system orbiting a barycenter with a third star, and all three of those stars orbiting around a barycenter with a fourth star. From here on is where the hierarchical system really comes in handy. With a chart like this, you can easily see how the system works. In the two binary configuration case, you have the two binaries orbiting the system's center of mass. In the single binary and two single stars configuration, you'll add another lower tier in the configuration. You have the binary here, which orbits this third star, and all three of these stars are orbiting together with the fourth star. If there are more stars in the system, say five, you can have an array of configurations with various binaries or single stars on a variety of tiers. Yet with this chart, you can easily see where the mass lies. You can do the same for systems with six, seven or more stars, but anything above seven is exceptionally rare and probably won't remain stable. Although maybe there are examples somewhere in the universe where it exists. So let's add planets into the mix. Could there be a planet out there with seven suns in their sky? Well, yes. Let's have a look at this hypothetical seven star system again. By here, there are three stars in a configuration, two in a binary configuration and a single star. We see that the single star has planets that specifically only orbit that star. They have one sun. Beyond that, there are planets that orbit both that star and its binary companions. These planets could be said to have three suns as they are orbiting three stars. Going to the top tier, there is a planet here that orbits the entire system. 
this planet could be said to have seven suns. Let's see what that looks like outside this graph. Interestingly, in a seven star system, from this distance it only looks like the orbit of a binary. That's because each set of stars is found in one of these two points. Here is the planet with seven suns. Its orbit takes it so far out that these stars aren't very bright in the sky, so even though it has seven suns, they don't really provide much in the way of warmth or light. Zooming in on the set containing three stars, we see the planets which orbit all three of these stars. These stars would appear much larger in this planet sky compared to the planet sky that was orbiting all seven. In this example, the two in the binary configuration appear almost too close together to distinguish, with the single star clearly separate. The other four stars that are part of the other set in the system are dim in the sky. They are very far away, and again don't provide much in the way of light or warmth, meaning there is a clear day and night on these planets. Interestingly though, this other set of stars would get marginally brighter and dimmer during their orbits, and the distance between their system's orbits would get more noticeable as they get closer. Lastly, let's look at a planet orbiting just the one star in this system. It orbits closely to the star and is tidally locked, although the night side would be disrupted by the binary configuration this star orbits with, as the planet's orbit can take it between the single star and the binary stars. The binaries orbit together closely, and so wouldn't easily be distinguished in the sky without a filter. Again, the other set of stars in the system would be dim and appear far away. This may make you wonder how many systems out there have more than one star. Are we unusual? Or is it the trend that there is only one star per system? Well, if you look up into a clear night sky, it may surprise you to know that most of these stars are binaries. The brightest star in the sky, Sirius, is a binary. Alpha Centauri, the closest star to us, is a binary. Or maybe even a trinary if you include Proxima. Polaris, the North Star, is also a binary. So for the longest time, astronomers thought that we were the unusual ones. However, it's coming to light with the improvements in technology that this is not the case, and that most star systems only contain one star. Perhaps the reason why the brightest stars in our sky are binaries is because they are giving off twice the light. Single stars are just generally dimmer and harder to see in comparison. It doesn't help either that 85% of all stars in existence are red dwarfs, and it seems that only about 25% of them have companions. In fact, it's interesting that binaries occur much more frequently with the really massive stars, the blue and white giants. This could be because of how these stars formed. Red dwarfs weren't pumped with as much material as they were forming, hence why they never attained the mass of a blue giant. In an environment where forming a blue giant is possible, however, models suggest that several stars could form at the same time. At first, these systems would be chaotic. The stars would be ejected until order could be found. The ones that remained and survived were the ones that ended up absorbing the most interstellar medium, thus becoming the most massive of stars. The interstellar medium that ended up caught in protoplanetary disks around these stars later form planets. In such turbulent conditions, it is likely that it's harder for planets to form compared to around a single star, however, it's certainly not impossible. So perhaps there is indeed somewhere out there where there is a planet with seven suns. What a cool sight that would be too. I just can't help letting my imagination run with what that would be like. However, it probably wouldn't be so great for a nice consistent day and night cycle. So there we have it, how planets orbit in multi-star systems. Now this sponsor is something useful you may enjoy. I know many of you watch Astrum because I try to be as concise as possible, providing as much information as I can in a short space of time. Perhaps you don't have a lot of time, so getting information quickly is important to you. This is where Blinkist is really handy. 
is an app that condenses non-fiction books into text or audio podcast style insights that can be ingested in roughly 15 minutes. They have over 3,000 books in their library so far, with more being added all the time, and all these titles are even available offline. One I thought was super interesting was A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking, written in an accessible way considering it talks about theory of relativity and black holes. If you download Blinkist using the link in the description, you can try it out for free for 7 days and that link will also get you 25% off a full membership. So if you want some quick, compact learning, why not give it a go? Thanks for watching. Sorry this video was late, I was sick last week and my voice was not in good shape for recording, so thanks for your patience. A big thank you to my patrons and members who support the channel. If you want to support too, you will gain access to the polls that help me pick the next Astrum answers, as well as thumbnails for my videos. Also be sure to check out the Astrum merch store. All the links can be found in the description below. All the best and see you next time.